Okay, today we have three uh, special guests visiting the Woodland Escape. So we got Kim, we got Brad, and we got Kim's uh, fascinating son, Memphis, here. And uh, Kim's now in possession of five deer five hides, right? Deer hides. So she wants to learn how to do it. Now we're going to attempt, I've done different segments or episodes on tanning, but I've never done one start to finish. So we're going to attempt in the next two days. We've got a, a captive workforce here for two days. <laughs> we're going to attempt to uh, do uh, brain tan deer hides start to finish. So in order to do that, because that's impossible. So in order to do that, I've got uh, hides at various stages, but we're going to start uh, with step one and that's going to be fleshing the hide. So uh, we're going to get that up on the beam here and we're going to get these guys all yucky. That's uh, that's the plan, right? That's you guys, you guys up for it? I'm Absolutely. in. There we go. Let's have at it. All right. Okay, so ideally um, you've harvested the animal and if possible, you're going to flesh it as soon as the hide's off. But if you're unable to do that, there's two ways to preserve it. So one is to freeze it or one is to salt it. So we've got, we've salted this hide. Basically that stops bacteria from forming. And uh, so the process we're gonna do now is called fleshing. So we don't have to be fancy here. We're not trying to take the membrane and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. All we're trying to do is get the meat and the fat off of it, right? Um, so we want a sharp tool, but it's not sharp in the sense of a knife. It's sharp in the sense of a really uh, straight edge. So this is a bottom one, and this is one I've made from an old spoke shave. So you don't have to go to this expense. You simply go to a flea market, get one for five bucks, take the cutting edge off of it, and put a flat, albeit sharp, corner on it. And, and it's quite ergonomic for use. And you have to, um, as you're doing it, you have to clean that edge off. If you don't have that sharp edge, yeah. that straight edge on the corner on it, you're not going to have too good a success. So what's happening here, this is called the membrane. It's not necessarily that that come off at this time. You'll, so you'll find as we progress, some of it will come off with it some's going to stay and we don't work too hard at getting all that membrane off we're going to do a separate uh, membraning step okay so basically like i said we're trying to get the fat and the uh, and the meat off of it and then we call it good we go on to the next step the other thing at this point it's impossible to hurt the hide you can just lay into it you're not going to damage it in any way And as I pointed out before, so you're using your body against the back of the fleshing beam as a vise. So that holds the hide. If we think about waste, um, as humans, we waste a lot of things. Food, fuel, electricity. But nature doesn't, doesn't waste anything. So the bits of meat at night, the raccoons come in and clean it up. The, the sinew or the fat the birds pick away at and all the hair and stuff that comes off in the process we leave in a big pile and in the spring the all the nesting birds come in and we've got over 70 nesting boxes and they'll pick up that that hair and it gets yeah. used and what doesn't get used rots into the earth so nature is a wonderful thing in terms of it doesn't waste anything unlike us anyway doing a good job all right Watch fingers. Get to clean your blade. Yeah. It makes a huge difference. Big difference. All right, are we done? Let's have a look. What say you, Brad? Are we finished? Looks good to me. Yeah. So, like, like I said, we're all these membrane that's going to come off in a different step. But we got the fat, we got the meat off of it. So we're essentially done step one. Um, and I, as I mentioned, if you can do that fresh right off the deer when it's harvested, that's ideal, but salting it if you can't works. Um, so now it's going to go into step two. Uh, we've got one over here brewing, but we're going to take this one and put it in the vat. I'll explain what we've done there. Okay, the next step is we're going to put that hide in an alkaline bath. So the way it was traditionally done with natives, they would use white ash and they would add water to it. So they're making an alkaline solution. 
The only problem with that, and I've done that, we've, we've done that a few times, um, you have to get the right concentration of alkalinity in the, in the solution, right? So the way they did it was using an egg. I explained this yesterday, but I'll do it for, because we're doing a tutorial. If you put an egg in it and the egg flips on its side, this is just a raw egg, um, the concentration's too strong. So you, you would add, you'd add more water. When the egg floats upright with the round side up and about the size of a, a loony exposed, that would be the right concentration. So what I use, same thing, we're using uh, hydrated lime, just agricultural lime here. And the, the, the joy of this is you, you can't overdo it. You just dump a bunch in, you put water in, and it's got the right uh, pH level for the hide. So we're gonna pull this hide out, we're gonna take that hide and put it in, and we're just gonna keep cycling hides today. So right. hopefully we get, by tomorrow we get a finished hide. Step, step two. Okay, you can see if you grab grab a chunk of this, how easy the hair slips. Yep. So that's what that taking that pH down into an alkaline level will will accomplish. And because we're trying to do a tutorial, just so people watching can replicate this, that should stay in that bath for about two to three days, roughly. If it's if it's really warm, you can get away with a day. But if it's coolish, like in a basement of a house or in your shop or something, you might want to leave it three days, right? So what we're doing, same tool, and there's two ways of doing this. You can, you can de-hair it and take the grain off at the same time, or you can take the hair all off and then come back and do the grain. That's what I prefer to do. Then I don't miss the grain. Okay. So the grain, I'm going to show you once we get down to it. It's a rubbery compound on the outside of that epidermal layer and it's hard to get off. So we're entering the second most labor intensive part. So your first phase took you about a half an hour, 45 minutes. Okay. Um, with practice, you'll do it in about 20 minutes. This is gonna take about an hour and a half, roughly. Um, but so I, my method is to take all the hair off of it and then come back and do the grain. Okay. So the hair comes off relatively easy. Once you get it started, so you can see if you look closer here that you see that rubbery compound. So I'm going to do one stretch where I take the grain right off, and it, it literally is a rubber one. And again, you can apply as much pressure as you want, you're not going to hurt the height. So you see the color of it, sort of that bronzy color, and you can actually see the layer of grain along the side, the brown part you see. So this one's fairly thin. This one may go fairly good. So again, if, if I leave that all, then I can get a pattern going where I ensure I don't miss any of it. Because if you miss any of the uh, any of the grain, the, the tanning solution can't penetrate the layer of the skin and you're going to end up with stiff spots. So, so the grain on this one's relatively thin. So I think what we're going to do is take it off as we go. Mm -hmm. And think of it, uh, this tool as a plow. If you think about a plow going in a field, the so one tire of the mm -hmm. tractor goes in the furrow of the one before. So if you use that as an edge yeah. and you just catch, just barely catch it, and then you take that strip off, and then you take the strip off. So you're catching that like a furrow. You see how we've left one in the middle? You, yeah. You'll get the hang of it as you go, and but you've got a little good. strip of grain in the middle. If that's left, you're gonna have a stiff spot in your hide there. So that, right. that rubbery membrane, that's gotta come off. Really hard, just that's it.
Okay, we finished the graining step, which was step four. Uh, and we've, we've grained two hides. So at this point, we've got an option. So this isn't really step five because this one isn't going to be a hide. This is going to be raw hide. So this isn't going to get tanned. It's not going to go to the stream for washing. All we're going to do is roll it up, wring it out, nail it out on a board, and then we're going to have raw hide. So you, you have an option at this point. The other hide that, uh, that Kim and, and Brad have just finished graining, we're going to take it down. We're going to leave it in the stream overnight. We're going to tan it tomorrow morning. And with any luck, we're going to be softening and smoking it tomorrow afternoon. So right now, we're call, it's called making a donut. So we're going to take the bottom, Kim, bring it up to the top, and put it over like so. And then we're just rolling it in on itself. Good. So now, and take an old axe handle here, well, a new axe handle, and you're going to have to move, Kim, around to this side. And what you're going to do is just turn that like this. Keep turning it. Don't stand under it because it's going to wring all that yucky stuff out. Yeah, and you can't hurt that hide. You could put a machine on this and it won't hurt the hide. If anything, what you're doing is partially stretching it. We're going to rotate it about a quarter of a turn. Now you're going to do it again. Either direction, doesn't matter. That's good. Okay, so we undo it, we rotate it another quarter turn, do it again. Okay, now we can dissect it, Kim. Okay, we all get on this. Basically, we're just going to stretch it in every direction we can. So there we have rawhide done. All we have to do is let it dry. Um, again, that's not part of our hide process. That's a, an option you have, and that one's done. So three or four days on that in a dry location, it'll be just stiff as a board. It'll be like a drum skin. So they used it for drums. They used it for uh, repairs to snowshoes or weaving snowshoes, building toboggans, lacing them together, all kinds of applications. So anyway, um, yeah, we'll get that dry. Okay, one more stage done. So what we're doing now is we're rinsing the hide. So it was in an alkaline solution. So what we're trying to do is get it back to a zero pH. Um, you can do it in buckets of water, but you gotta change the water every hour for a couple or three days. You can do it in a pond, but that takes a couple of days. But you can find flat, fast flowing water. This is gonna clean it overnight and it's gonna be a zero pH in the morning. We'll pick it up. Um, then at that point we're able to get it into the tanning solution and we're on from there. Good. Okay, so Brad, Kim and Memphis went down to the river. Uh, so this is the hide that we uh, soaked in the water overnight. It's been grained, it's been dehaired, it's been grained. Uh, now we're taking the membrane off, so this is be the carcass side of the animal. Basically, we're left with a bit of fuzz on. Now, you don't have to get it all. In fact, I, I like to leave a little, because I find once it's smoked, that's going to be the outside of the garment. This nice, smooth side will be against your skin, right? And that texture, I, I think, adds to it. You can spend hours into it. The key to remember when you're doing this is it's really vulnerable at this point. So if you're aggressive like you were for the graining and you get any kind of a wrinkle, you're going to put a tear in it. So I work on small areas uh, and I just keep going over it till I'm satisfied with the amount. If we didn't take any of the membrane off, it, it won't take the tanning solution very well. So we, we have to get, you know, a good percentage of it off, but not all of it. So that's the, that's the last step we're going to do before we actually um, put this in the braining solution, or the tanning solution in our case, oil and, and soap. And, and again, Kim, it's a good idea to try to get some sort of a pattern that you can follow. Um, sometimes it's easier to go do just the outer edge, 
And again, that's the vulnerable part. The belly is really soft, but you could do like six inches all the way around the hide, and then you're just left with a big circle in the middle. So should we start down here on this I, I would recommend that, yeah. And then again, a vulnerable area is right around the bullet holes, exit holes of the bullet, so. And we want to try and keep this as flat as we can with yep. no wiggle. Yep. All right. And this is one where you got to clean your tool off because it'll stick to it and you're just, um, you tend to do a lot more work if you don't clean the tool. Yep, about three, four strokes. And you want to be careful of those. I'll show you what I mean by leaving some of the membrane on. So this is a, turn this way, Memphis. So, there's an example of some membrane that's been left on. I kind of like that texture. And if you turn Memphis, so you can see some of the texture on this front one. You see how that's darker? So that's been smoked longer. Most of the grain was taken off that sleeve. So it's, it's a little cleaner. The advantage traditionally done in the sock, the advantage if you're going to make a, like a hunting shirt or an anorak or a whatever, we call them trade shirts, what I'm wearing, um, if you do them all in a smokehouse like we've got, they all come out the same color. If you're doing them traditionally like in the sock, like natives did, you really got to have your sample there of what you're trying to obtain. And it's difficult because you got to turn them inside out when they're in the sock method. So anyway, that's an example and we've still got some more work to do. All done? All done. Let's have a look. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Okay, so it's going in the tanning solution. I'm just going to let you hold that for a sec, Kim. I'm just going to mix up a new batch. So in terms of the tanning solutions, we mentioned you can use wood ash, or sorry, you can use brains, you can use eggs, or you can use a little modern thing here. We don't normally do this, but we're trying to do this as a tutorial, so we want people to be able to redo what we're doing over the past few days. So we're using pure neat's foot oil, and we're using ivory soap. So basically for a batch, we're going to use about two liters, maybe two quarts and a little bit of warm water. Um, hot water actually, not boiling. If it's too hot for your hands, it's too hot for the height. So uh, we're going to use a grater here, make sort of a powder out of this soap. So the formula is um, half a bar of soap and these contain 500 milliliters of, of um, oil. So we're going to use about 250 milliliters. So you could dump that in if you could, Kim. And I'll just keep grating this. Yep. Yeah. And of course, I didn't bring a spoon. So yeah, you can just dump it in. The whole kit and caboodle. So again, what the tanning solution does, it, it essentially it works like a lubricant. So if we can get an oil or a fat inside the two epidermal layers of the hide, we can soften it. And then, of course, the last step to keep it soft is the smoking process. So we'll give this just a wee bit of a stretch. Hopefully it helps the solution absorb a bit. And what we'll do over, like they say you can do it in two hours. I've never had much luck short periods. So we're going to do this overnight in the tanning solution. We're going to stretch it in the morning like this again. We're going to wring it and then we're going to put it back in the tanning solution for a couple more hours and then we soften it. So I think that's good enough. And about every hour that I walk by this pot, I'll get my hands in there and I'll pull it and knead it. And I'll actually literally work that solution into those epidermal layers. So we're going to, uh, it's cold enough this time of year, we have the wood stove going. So we'll set this right by the wood stove, keeps the solution warm. And then, like I say, every time you think of it, if you're walking by the wood stove or you're putting a block of wood in, you stop and just go over the whole thing and give it a pull and a knead and that gets all the goop inside. Cheers. Cheers. Well done guys. We've done a lot of steps to get to this point. So we're at the, um, we're at the softening stage now and, and this is the, this is where the real work starts. Mm -hmm. So the graining was second worst to this, but, uh, stretching is going to take us, uh, anywhere from three to five hours. 
And we found over the, over the years that stretching it by something warm is going to help it dry quicker. And so what we're doing, you're going to see blue spots. Those spots are soaking wet. And as it gets, as it dries, it's going to get whiter. So we're going to work, we, we want to just disregard the wet spots because we've got lots of time to work on them. We're going to have less time to work on particularly the edges. They're going to dry first. So we, we want to work on the ed spots as they're drying. Right now, we don't have to go hard. We just want to stretch it and get it sort of into its shape. And about uh, 45 minutes or an hour from now, then, then the real work starts. So right now, we're just going to rotate it. So we're each going to pull on it and rotate it counterclockwise. And just pull in any direction you can and then turn it. And it's amazing how much stretch is in a hide. So an alternative to hand stretching is to stitch it into a frame. And you can use a tool then, like a, a wooden paddle, uh, and you literally lean into it and stretch it. And at the time you're doing that, someone should be going around the edges to work on them in between the stitch holes. But um, you end up losing some because you've got to make the button holes all the way around the perimeter, and you end up cutting off a good inch of the hide. So. Mm. And it's not nearly as much fun as the camaraderie around a fire. <laughs> okay, our tanning team did very well uh, with this hide. So Kathy and I have been tanning hides for a number of years, and we've only had a handful turn out this soft. So a really good job. This is going to be a beautiful hide. And last step is smoking it. and. Uh, we're going to get it in. We've got our fire started down here, and uh, we're getting some coals going because we're going to be using some punk wood. Whoa, good job. Good job. Okay, so what we're doing at this point, we're um, making a bed of coals because we're going to be using punk wood. So a lot of people talk about uh, different woods to use. What I found out, it really doesn't matter. You don't want to use green wood and you don't want to use resinous wood. So this is jack pine, but it's punked and we tried to dry it out. So it's going to give us really dense smoke, but it's more um, duration and, and density of smoke. It's going to give you the color. It needs a minimum of two to three hours and by doing it this way in a smokehouse versus the traditional sock method, we don't have to turn it inside out halfway through. So we're smoking both sides at the same time. And uh, yeah, I'm thinking about four hours, we should have a finished hide, four to five hours. And whatever color you want. So if you like a light color, we stop a little sooner. If you want it darker, we keep going. What do you think? There we go. That's pretty good. One completed hide. What do you think, Brad? Very nice. Huh? Very nice. I feel it's even softer now that it's been smoked, eh? That, that is an excellent hide. That's going to make a good garment or bags or whatever you decide to do with it. Anyway, you guys are off here for your long trek home. Wondering if you'd give me a hand to string a couple of buffalo hides before you go. I think we can manage that. Got to move an old wigwam too. It's going to be my smoke. This is too small to smoke a buffalo hide in. So yes. got to move an old wigwam, string a couple of buffalo hides. We're in. And we'll get you on the trail. Sounds good. Okay, great. Thanks guys. So this is, <laughs> this is my tired old wigwam frame. Uh, it served us well, actually. I used to sleep in here with my grandkids. So we had it, and it was dome shaped. It's kind of got a little, little tired, wonky. And here was the door. We had an open fire about where your feet are, and we had a sleeping platform built in a circle around the entire, entire room. And then, yeah, I got some fond memories. So we initially covered it with bark. Bark eventually rotted. Then we covered it with canvas. Canvas eventually rotted. And now the frame's rotting. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off a little bit shorter, take the bottom frame off, and I'm going to use this to smoke the buffalo robes in. So I'll have a fire where your feet is, are, and uh, we'll drape the hide over it, 
and we'll just have an open fire, smudge fire in the middle. So if you'd give me a hand, we'll get this cut off. So an elder uh, native uh, taught me this trick. So just using a round stick, what I'm doing is gonna put buttonholes all the way around this, about every four and a half, five and a half inches all the way around to stitch it into the frame. So just using a, a limb, a round limb, and go the distance I wanna go, hold it underneath. And when I make that cut, it'll only cut on the top part of that radius so it, it doesn't make too big a hole. 